Insolvencies are absolutely exploding. And you should be seeing this absolutely everywhere. Yet you probably ask the average person and they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. Canadian business bankruptcies are absolutely exploding and the amount of people missing payments, according to a new report from Equifax, has surged higher as we're going to get into right now. So first of all, let's start off with what's going on with insolvencies of Canadian businesses. This is really something you've got to keep your eye on because obviously insolvencies are going to feed into the labor market and potential recession, depression conditions that we have in Canada. So Canadian business insolvencies insolvencies jump 87% higher. Canadian business insolvencies have climbed sharply over the past few months. The OSB received 2003 business insolvency filings in Q1 2024, an increase of 31.7% from the previous quarter. First quarter filings were a whopping 87.2% higher than the same quarter last year. So what does that say about the trend? And I just want to highlight, guys, that the Bank of Canada still has has interest rates at 5%. Interest rates haven't gone down yet. So the Bank of Canada, if they're not seeing the labor market data, which is showing them that unemployment is absolutely skyrocketing and it's going up out of control, they're really not going to do anything. And not only that, the unemployment number has become so misleading. And you have to remember that is produced and fed to them by the government that they're just making decisions off really bad data. So <laughs> I mean, it's just absolutely hilarious when their own data is essentially leading to a lot of their terrible, terrible decisions. So you can see on this chart what's happened with insolvencies. You can see in 2018, it was around 930. And now it's over 100% more at 2003. And you can see that the jump has been pretty progressive going up at a rapid rate. But there's really been a jump 2023 to 2024 one has to ask the question, has this had anything to do with commercial real estate? Because there are a lot of companies that are tied to commercial real estate that are going bankrupt and struggling. I'm sure there's a lot of restaurants and there's a lot of places that have took on debt over the pandemic that are now finding it overwhelming. So despite the booming population theoretically providing more demand, insolvency experts warn the deck is slanted against businesses. And again, guys, just think about it because the narrative is they're bringing in lots of skilled workers and they're flush with cash. Well, if they're flush with cash, surely the economy would be booming. Surely used car sales would be absolutely skyrocketing because all these new people, they've got to buy a car and they've got to buy all these different things. So it's very stimulative towards the economy. But it's a very short term thing because obviously if those people cannot find a job, then they actually just become a burden because then you're having to pay them out in EI and government benefits and everything like that. So this just kind of shows you how the lie that the mainstream media is telling you about immigration for the past four, five, 10 years, 15 years is just a complete myth. We are seeing signs of a significant rise in distress among Canadian businesses, says Andre Bolduc, the chair of CARP, a national insolvency organization. He warns many are still shouldering the burden of the pandemic on top of high input and labor costs, declining consumer spending and higher debt carrying costs. And you have to you have to think about how one feeds into another, right? Obviously, if people's wages aren't going up enough, again, against inflation, against the rate of inflation, they're losing purchasing power. And we know that's exactly what's happened. So obviously, it's just going to eventually feed into the economy. So you know, it just doesn't work when you've got this broken economy. And when you've actually just got a fictional economy created and distorted by a lot of government spending, which happened during the pandemic, obviously. So he said the end of pandemic supports has also introduced additional complexity. The interest-free period of CBA loans granted to businesses to help navigate the downturn has now expired. And obviously, we covered that in the lead up to it. And we said that this might cause a lot of business bankruptcies. This is exactly
exactly what is happening. We're never going to be right about everything here, but we definitely nailed it on that one because it's just obvious. When you had the surveys coming out saying so many of these businesses were on the edge anyway, obviously the expiration of that is going to prove difficult. And you know, the interesting thing is I read a lot of the comments on those videos and you know, a lot of people were saying, like I said at the time, which was essentially, what's the point? What is the point to keep extending the deadline? Because if they're not making money now, is there more chance that they're going to be making money in six months? No, I would say there's less chance because the economy is getting worse, not better, as you can see by looking at this chart. I mean, just look at this chart. This is insanity. Insolvencies are absolutely exploding. And you should be seeing this absolutely everywhere. Yet you probably ask the average person and they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. So again, this comes from the Globe and Mail. That article from Better Dwelling that we just covered will be linked in the description. So again, according to the Federal Office of the Superintendents for Bankruptcies, 2003 business insolvencies were filed from January 1st to March 31st of this year. Of those, 1,599 were bankruptcies and 404 were proposal, which is a legal option to negotiate lower debt repayment with creditors. But obviously, it absolutely obliterates your credit rating and is essentially a death sentence. I mean, it's like doing a debt consolidation if you're doing it just personally. It's like doing that for your business. So the number of insolvencies was up 32% from the previous quarter and 87% from the same quarter last year. We covered that. This continues a steady climb in filings over the past two years. Insolvencies had hit a low point in the pandemic because of government support programs and rock bottom interest rate, both of which are now gone. They're right about that. You know, they did hit a low because of those interest rates and mainly because of those government support. But obviously, that is just distorting things wildly. And when interest rates are low like that, that's what lures people into a false sense of security because they think, oh, the economy is fine. The economy is going to boom. Interest rates being low is going to be a sign of a good economy when it's the complete opposite of that. And it was the pandemic supports that were done by governments around the world that distorted things to such an extreme that people went out there and they spent all those savings as we covered last week in that video. So it is absolutely insane. And obviously this is happening. We covered this many times. I'm not going to go into this in detail, but it's happening because of the private debt levels. The private debt level is one of the highest in the world in Canada. It's at 265% of GDP. Absolutely insane. And we don't need to say any more on that. So let's get into the Equifax report. I have no idea why this is all formatted bizarrely. It's just a mess. But anyway, I'll try and salvage this here. So according to Equifax Canada's latest market pulse consumer trends and insights report, economic pressure is more visible and many consumers are struggling to make monthly credit payments. Delinquency rates for non-mortgage balances that are 90 days plus overdue went up from 1% in Q4 2022 to 1.3% in Q4 2023, representing a 28.9% increase. Mortgage delinquency rates over the last 12 months saw a 52.3% increase from 0.09% to 0.14%. And I will link a video about how the Bankers Association numbers are just complete <laughs> joke. They're just a complete joke. They're not even worth reporting, in my opinion. And obviously, they're reported through the banks, but I'll link a video at the end of this one. So it's really interesting. So let's get into the new nuance of what is happening with these credit payments. So Ontario and BC have been particularly affected with mortgage delinquency rates soaring by 135.2% and 62.2% respectively compared to Q4 2022. Surpassing pre-pandemic levels, financially stressed mortgage holders in these provinces also increasingly miss payments on their credit cards. Missed payment levels in Ontario and BC are primarily being driven by younger homeowners defined as 36 years of age and under. And we literally hit the nail on the head last week when we talked about this, saying that the first time home buyer and the younger person is literally the one who makes up most of the market. And they're probably one of the weakest players out there. And that literally just confirms what we said last week in that report, which is just obvious. I mean, this is just all logic to me. It's not like I'm some smart guy and I know everything and I can predict the future. That is nowhere near true, but it's just that I'm using simple logic and critical thinking, which many people do on this channel as well. So it's absolutely 
insane when you think about it, but it's to be expected. So less money left over to pay the credit card bills. In Q4 2023, consumer debt hit 2.45 trillion, up 3.2% from the previous year. Non-mortgage debt rose by 4.1%, mainly fueled by a 15.9 billion rise in credit card debt during 2023 to 116.2 billion. Just think about that, billion guys. That could eat through one of these banks' loan loss provisions. I mean, these banks are pretty well capitalized in Canada. I would agree with that statement. But the problem is, it's where they're allocating all that money. Because just because a bank's got capital, depending on where it's allocated, that doesn't mean it cannot go bust. I mean, if you look at Credit Suisse, for example, they had just literally passed an audit and then they were going bust literally a couple of weeks later. So, you know, there are all these stress tests that banks go through that you hear and probably makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. But the reality is, you know, when you look at the credit card debt, for instance, I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, this is probably bullish for EQ Bank, I think, which is an online bank because they don't even issue credit cards, I don't think. So they're really doing a good thing there because a lot of this credit card debt is not being paid back, as you can see in the Equifax report. So it's crazy. And then we'll get into where the debt and delinquencies are the highest in the country and its usual suspects, really, or should I say not usual suspect, because you've got Calgary 1.44% here, Edmonton 1.82%, 1.66% for Toronto, 1.42% St. John's. We know unemployment has been particularly bad there. And you've got Fort McMurray at 2.16%. So you can see that across the board, everywhere, apart from Halifax is the lowest at 14.80%. The year over year change in the delinquency rate is substantially higher, up 20% in Calgary, 20% in Edmonton, 15% nearly in Halifax, 36% in Montreal. And a lot of these places, think about it, guys, these are places which still have housing markets that are relatively doing okay right now. Although I would say they're really being challenged right now because, for example, Calgary, Montreal, Edmonton, all these places, house prices may still be rising, but rents are actually going down, which means if you watch that video that I did in the past, that means that they're getting more and more overvalued as time goes on. So the risk is building there. Whether the prices are going up or not, it doesn't really matter. So it's kind of insane what is going on. And now I wanted to show you this, which was a survey that NerdWallet did. Very, very interesting. Reasons Canadian credit card habits have changed over the past 12 months. This is not what you really want to see if you're a credit card lender. And you can see that the top reason, 64%, is because prices for goods and services were higher. I had to make a major unexpected purchase. So think about that, guys. That's not being prepared with savings. And when you look at the inflation rate, that is essentially them saying that inflation is too high. That is why they're spending more money on credit cards. So it's like we've been saying time and time again, the reason why credit card debt keeps rising is because people are literally putting the payments and the cost of higher inflation onto a credit card. It's just going to end in an ultimate disaster because people's wages are not growing at the pace of debt. And the reality is that you're just in this debt time bomb that is ticking underneath that people can't see. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, I would highly recommend that you watch this video here, which is about how those banks insolvency numbers are a total joke. And if you're looking for a VPN to get around all the censorship stuff in Canada, you know where to go. Use the VPN I use expressvpn.com forward slash market mania. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.